Have you ever wondered why we call certain intervals perfect? What's so perfect about them? Well, the answer lies in the overtone series. In fact, the major triad and the 5-1 perfect cadence were not randomly chosen, but rather they are both derived from the overtone series. Now, in a previous video, I explained that when a string vibrates, it does so in multiple ways at once. It vibrates at the fundamental frequency and then at whole number intervals above the fundamental. So the whole length of the string vibrates at a fundamental frequency of say 110 hertz. Then the string vibrates in halves, which is the second harmonic at 220 hertz. It also vibrates in thirds, which is the third harmonic at 330 hertz. It also vibrates in quarters, which is the fourth harmonic at 440 hertz, and so on. Now, while each instrument is different, generally overtones get progressively weaker the higher up you go. So the 85th overtone is much harder to hear than the second or third overtone. So a rule we have to remember is that lower overtones are louder and harmonically stronger. And each of these harmonics is a particular musical note. And of course, any two notes, including two harmonics, form some kind of interval. So every interval can be expressed as a ratio between the frequencies of two notes, or harmonics. Let me show you an example. Let's say we have a note where the fundamental frequency is 110 hertz. That is, it vibrates back and forth 110 times per second, which is the note A. Now, the first overtone will be 220 hertz and will be exactly one octave above the fundamental. And 220 over 110 gives you a ratio of 2 to 1, and this ratio denotes an octave. Now let's ignore the second overtone for the moment and look at the third overtone. We see it has a frequency of 440 hertz. If we compare this to the first overtone, then we have 440 over 220, which again is equal to a ratio of 2 to 1, or an octave. And so we see that every time you double the frequency, you get a note exactly one octave higher. So 110 hertz is the note A, 220 is the note A an octave higher, 440 is the note A an octave higher than that, 880 is an A an octave higher than that, and so on. So frequency is what is called a logarithmic scale. Every time we double the frequency, we hear an octave interval. Even though the difference between 220 and 110 is less than the difference between 880 and 440, we still hear the same interval between the notes. This means we hear an interval as the ratio between two frequencies. So the lowest overtone, and therefore the harmonically strongest interval, is an octave. Next, if we look at the second overtone and compare it to the first overtone, we get 330 over 220, which gives us a ratio of 3 to 2. This is an interval of a perfect fifth. We find this same ratio between the fifth overtone and the third overtone, that is 660 divided by 440. This means the fifth overtone is a perfect fifth above the third overtone. And we know that the third overtone is two octaves above the fundamental. So this means the second and the fifth overtone must be the note E, a perfect fifth above the A. So the second lowest overtone, and therefore harmonically the second strongest interval, or the strongest non-octave interval, is a perfect fifth. This is the basis of the 5-1 dominant tonic relationship. This is why moving down a fifth is such a harmonically strong sounding sequence. This is also the basis of the circle of fifths, where you just keep stacking fifths on top of each other, but we'll get to that in a future video. Next, if we look at the fourth overtone and compare it to the third overtone, we get 550 over 440, which gives us a ratio of 5 to 4. This is an interval of a major third. In this case, the note C sharp, which is a major third above the third overtone A. 
So then in the first five overtones, we have the root A, the major third C sharp, and the fifth E, which is the basis of the major triad. So by playing a single note, you're actually, in effect, playing the entire major triad of that note. So as you can see, the overtone series is really important to music. It determines how music is structured. The major triad and the 5-1 perfect cadence are not just things that were created out of thin air. They are inherently in the structure of nature, and music is just a reflection of the laws of nature. And the overtone series, or the harmonic series, in theory goes on forever, but let's just have a look at the first 20 harmonics. Now, we generally only hear the first 8 harmonics clearly, with the rest being progressively weaker. Now, let's take the note C, just for simplicity. Now, this note on the piano has a frequency of 65.4 Hz. Now, we find that this note has the following harmonics. So, starting with C, we go up to C, G, C, E, G, A flat, B flat, C, D, E, A flat, F sharp, G, A sharp, A flat, A flat, B flat, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. And as we've seen, all intervals can be expressed as a ratio of two harmonics derived from this harmonic series. Now you see them all written out here. A perfect octave is 2 over 1, a perfect fifth is 3 over 2, perfect fourth is 4 over 3, major 6 is 5 over 3, major 3 is 5 over 4, and so on. Now another interesting thing about the overtone series is that it determines whether an interval sounds consonant or dissonant. The lower the numbers in the interval ratio, the more consonant or pleasant the interval will sound. So a perfect octave of 2 over 1 or a perfect fifth of 3 over 2 will sound more consonant and more pleasant than a tritone of 45 over 32. Now another way of saying this is that notes that share a large number of overtones sound consonant, while notes that do not share any overtones sound dissonant. So if we take two notes, the more harmonics in common and the lower those harmonics, the more consonant the interval will sound. Now, as I've already mentioned in practice, we only really clearly hear up to the eighth harmonic. So two notes will sound consonant if they share a harmonic up to and including the eighth harmonic. Now, if we just look at the first 10 harmonics, we find that the two notes that make up a perfect octave interval share a lot of harmonics. In fact, all the harmonics of the higher note can be found in the harmonics of the lower note. So in effect, the higher note is just a subset of the lower note. If we look at an interval of a perfect fifth, we find that these two notes also share a lot of overtones. Similarly, with a perfect fourth, we find that these two notes share a number of overtones. And again, with a major sixth, notice we have a couple overtones in common, but fewer than in the previous intervals. And similarly, with a major third, again, we have a couple of overtones in common, but fewer than before and higher up than before. Now, on the other hand, look at the minor second and tritone intervals. Now, they don't share any overtones in common in the first 10 harmonics. And this, incidentally, is why an octave, fifth, and fourth are considered perfect. They are the most consonant intervals you can have per the overtone series. The next most consonant intervals are the major third and major sixth, and the most dissonant intervals are the minor second and tritone. Also, keep in mind that this is using just intonation, or just tuning. Now, we'll discuss other tuning systems in future videos, but this is just for your own information. And the same rules apply for chords. You can express a chord as a frequency ratio, and the chord will sound consonant and pleasant if the notes all share at least one harmonic below and including the eighth harmonic. For example, if we look at the major triad, and just using 100 Hz as our fundamental frequency for simplicity, this has a frequency ratio of 4 to 5 to 6. And we see that all the notes have at least one overtone in common. Therefore, this chord is consonant. 
If we take the minor triad, the ratio is 10 to 12 to 15. We see some common overtones, but fewer than the major triad. So this chord is still consonant, but less so than the major triad. And if we take the diminished triad, we see only one overtone in common. So this chord is dissonant. So as we've seen, whether an interval sounds consonant or dissonant depends entirely on the overtone series.